Maritime English Conversations on Merchant Vessel Chapter 3 Safety Training on Board 32 Safety Training on Deck Assistant Officer, OK. Now you must wear a safety helmet and safety shoes. Alex, but the safety helmet makes me hot, and the safety shoes are too heavy. I think that we can still work safely with lighter fittings. Assistant officer, I know it's more comfortable with lighter gear, but don't forget it can be pretty dangerous working here. For example, you might slip while painting and hit your head on the pipeline. Or the radio antenna may break and fall on the deck. These accidents have happened before. We never know what may happen. Raymond, I think we should always wear protective gear. When we are performing emergency tasks, we won't have time to get our safety helmets or shoes in an emergency. I'd rather be always ready for an emergency. Assistant officer, that's good thinking. We don't have to worry about accidents all of the time, but if you wear safety gear, you will be more prepared if an accident happens. If you aren't dressed properly, it might slow down your work. Alex, I understand. Somebody told me that we should never run on deck. Raymond, yes. You see, you could slip and fall or you could trip on a rope, resulting in serious injuries. Be careful especially on the deck, which is covered with denatured epoxy paint. That paint becomes wet and slippery when it is humid. The hawser could also break, and that could be dangerous for the crew. So be careful when you are on standby. Assistant officer, also, be careful when you see a running rope. It could snap and whip you. Lighter gear, light clothing or equipment. Dangerous, risky, hazardous, something that may injure a person. Protective gear, clothing or equipment that will protect a person. Performing emergency tasks, doing operations in sudden, potentially dangerous situations prepared be ready for serious injuries grave damage inflicted on people humid moist wet set of the air containing large amounts of moisture hawser cable or rope used for mooring a ship whip to strike or lash 33 on the deck of a bulb carrier in port assistant officer wait don't pass by there there's a safety rope there, and you might stumble there. Walk on the other side, on the port side. Alex, but going by the starboard side is faster. Assistant officer, you're right, but it's more dangerous walking on the starboard side. Lumps of ore could fall through a gap in the grab. You'd be seriously injured if a lump hits you. It could even kill you. Even when the grab is still on shore, it's hard to walk on the deck because it gets covered with ore. Alex, I see. I'll be sure to walk on the port side. I have to remember that there are many dangerous things on board. Assistant officer, you may not believe it, but there was an accident like that on a container ship just recently. A lashing worker from the shore fell from the top of the bulwark. And he was very experienced. The wire in his hand swung him around, and he lost his balance. He was taken to the hospital by ambulance, but the accident nearly cost him his life. He fell on the wharf right by the gangway that the crew uses to go on shore. Fortunately, no one was there when he fell. Another time, a hatch cover dropped from a gantry crane onto the wharf while it was being transferred from a container ship. They were lucky that nobody was injured in that accident, either. Alex, which means I must always pay attention to what's under and over me. Tumble, to walk unsteadily, almost falling or missing a step. Port side, the left side of a ship when facing the front or bow. Grab, to grasp or get hold of, a device for picking up something. Lashing worker, a workman in charge of lashing, tying, things down bulwark wall raised structure rampart 
Ambulance, emergency vehicle used to carry sick or injured people to a hospital. Nearly cost him his life, he was nearly killed. Gangway, a narrow passage. Gantry crane, a crane mounted on a sturdy support. Container ship, ship specialized in carrying containers from port to port. 34 dangers on a tanker. Chief officer, because you are new on the tanker, let's begin this training session with the basics. Refer to the green brochure safety on a tanker. Well, what kinds of dangers do you think are lurking on a tanker? Elon, fire. The gas from the crude oil could ignite and start a fire. Johnny, an even worse case is an explosion. Chief officer, that's right. The tanks are filled with crude oil vapor, and when the oil is being loaded, it could spill onto the deck. The vapor, or hydrocarbon gas, is very dangerous. You should never carry matches or lighters while on the deck. You may not even carry them to your cabins. Elon, I guess that's why we should smoke only in designated areas. There are matches there, and the ashtrays are filled with water. I smoke now, but I've made up my mind to quit smoking. It will be better for my health, too. Chief Officer, what are some other dangers? Elon, since we use inert gas, there could be a shortage of oxygen. Chief Officer, actually, there is little oxygen in the tanks. We are not too affected by inert gas on deck except while performing specific tasks, such as gas freeing. Toxicity hazards caused by crude oil gas are more likely to happen. Johnny, I've heard that a small quantity of crude oil gas isn't too dangerous. Chief Officer, that's true, but crude oil that contains a lot of hydrogen sulfide is dangerous. It could paralyze you if you inhale it. Brochure, small booklet, pamphlet lurking, hiding, awaiting. Ignite, to catch fire. Explosion, sudden, violent release of energy and substances. Crude oil vapor, vapor that forms when crude oil is contained. Hydrocarbon gas, a gas of organic substances which contains carbon and hydrogen. Designated areas, area marked off for a special purpose. Oxygen, a gaseous substance existing in the air which is essential for breathing. Gas freeing, removing unwanted gas. Toxicity hazard, potential danger from toxic poisonous, harmful, substances. Hydrogen sulfide, colorless, poisonous gas with the smell of rotten eggs. Paralyze, to make a person lose free control of movement. Inhale, to breath in, to intake. 35 Tanker Fires and Explosions Chief Officer, let's talk more about fire and explosions. Flammable gas, alone, doesn't cause explosions. Elon, you mean there must be oxygen, too. Johnny, and also a source of ignition. Chief officer, you're right. But what is more important, however, is their concentration. What I am about to tell you is a little advanced, but we have to discuss it so you are aware of the dangers. Elon, are you talking about LEL or UEL? Chief officer, Yes. First of all, petroleum gas consists of many different substances. Each of these has different properties. That's why the ICS has defined UEL or UFL as a 10% concentration, and LEL or LFL as 1%. Johnny that means that the petroleum gas won't explode unless the gas concentration isn't within that range. Chief Officer, exactly and an oxygen concentration of 11% is also necessary. Even if the petroleum gas concentration is in the explosion range, there can be no explosion if the oxygen concentration is less than 11%. Johnny, so that's why the inert gas sent to the tanks has an oxygen concentration of less than 8%. Chief Officer, the most dangerous problem with the tanks is static electricity. But if the tanks are filled with the proper amount of inert gas, we don't have to worry about static electricity. Elon, is it safe on deck? Chief Officer, 
the most important thing is to check for gas on deck when you are chipping or welding. That's why proper maintenance and good communication between the deck crew and the engine crew is so important. Flammable gas, a gas that catches fire easily. Ignition, catching of fire, starting to bum. Concentration, the amount of substance in a solution, strength. LEL, lower explosive limit. UEL, upper explosive limit. Petroleum gas, vapor generated from petroleum or oil. Substances, materials. Properties, qualities, characteristics. ICS, International Chamber of Shipping. UFL, upper flammable limit. LFL, lower flammable limit. Static electricity, discharge of accumulated energy, electric potential which can produce sparks welding, joining metals by applying extreme heat. 36 Toxicity Hazards on a Tanker Chief Officer, we will now talk more about toxic gas hazards and safety. Elon, is it hydrogen sulfide? Chief Officer, most crude oil comes from wells with high levels of hydrogen sulfide but the level is usually reduced by a stabilization process before the crude oil is loaded. If this system fails, however, a tanker may load with a higher than usual hydrogen sulfide content. Then special adjustments must be made. Mexican or Qatar crude oil contains high levels of hydrogen sulfide, which smells like rotten eggs. Be very careful not to breathe it because it could paralyze you instantly. One time, when we were at the eulage hole, a man lost consciousness after inhaling the gas. Elon, there must be some way to avoid this problem. Chief Officer, we have pocket-sized detectors for hydrogen sulfide. You should always have one with you. We are allowed to work when the concentration is less than 10 ppm, parts per million. If you detect more gas than the 10 ppm allowed, you must be very careful. Johnny. That's why I saw oxygen masks at the entrance of the pump room. Should we use them in that case? Chief Officer, those masks are used when there is gas present or when there is a fire. They are also useful in the pump room if a large amount of oil has leaked and gas is escaping. But even with a mask on, it is still dangerous if there is a lot of gas. Toxic gas hazard, dangers associated with poisonous gases. Well oil well, a hole drilled into the ground to draw out petroleum. Reduced, decreased, made smaller in number or quantity. A stabilization process, a process for making something stable. Rotten egg, eggs that have gone bad. Instantly, promptly, right away, on the spot. Lost consciousness, a person losing sensory perception. Avoid not to encounter or experience detector device used to find something oxygen mask a mask worn over the nose and mouth for supplying oxygen 37 oxygen deficiency on a coal or carrier Alex well we're safe on this ship from accidental oxygen deprivation because as a coal or carrier it doesn't have an inert gas system assistant officer that's crazy this ship is especially dangerous. Alex, really? Why is that? Assistant officer, it's very dangerous in the coffer dams, in the ballast tanks of the double bottom, and in the lower stools. Whenever coal is being loaded, there is a danger of asphyxiation. Alex, why is that? There must be enough oxygen, we go down there all the time. Assistant officer, it's rust. Oxygen is consumed when iron rusts. This uses up the oxygen over time. You have to take special care and measure the oxygen level whenever you enter these areas. Be sure to check with two oxygen detectors, not just one. And you must have enough ventilation. Alex, how do you ventilate without a fan? Assistant officer, we keep the manholes open for a day or more. It's natural ventilation. For double bottom tanks, 
We open both the fore and aft holes to let the air in. Coal catches fire easily. And fire lowers the level of oxygen and raises the level of carbon dioxide. Alex, that's scary. Assistant officer, yes, it is. Two seamen died once in a lower stool because of a shortage of oxygen. If they had measured the oxygen properly, placed a watch on deck and prepared their breathing apparatus, they would be alive today. Deprivation, a lack of something. Coal ore carrier, a ship for carrying coal ore. That's crazy. Nonsense. Don't be silly. Cofferdam, a liquid tight chamber used to prevent oil spills. Double bottom, ship's bottom having a double structure or lining. Lower stool, a structure enforcing the bulkhead. Asphyxiation, a lack of oxygen causing death or loss of consciousness equals asphyxia. Rust, oxidization of iron. Ventilation, circulation of air. Carbon dioxide, a chemical substance made of one carbon molecule and two oxygen molecules. Scary, making people worried and afraid, frightening. Breathing apparatus, device that helps a person to breath, air. 38 safety training on the forecastle. Assistant officer, do you know what this is? Alex, it is about chain stopper. Assistant officer, right. When berthing at SBM, take the chain from the SBM into this lead. When three or four chain links pass through, use the stopper to clamp it down. It's easy but dangerous. You should start with the messenger rope, then the hawser, and the chain follows the wire rope. But it can get caught in the Panama hole and break. Alex, what do we do then? Assistant officer. You must follow the chief officer's directions and watch out for running ropes. Try to avoid any broken ropes, and be sure to keep an eye on them. Alex, at school, we were told that taking a rope stopper was very dangerous. Assistant officer, make sure to handle a rope stopper only after the chief officer tells you it is safe. Never think that it is safe on your own. Many seamen have been injured in this situation, and many have lost their lives. Alex, I understand. Is the same true for tug lines? Assistant officer, when we are loading at port, the ship's freeboard is large, which means that the height from the deck to the tube boat is very high. So a big tug line is used. You also have to use a big messenger line when you wind it on the warping end or when using a capstan. Make sure to do this with the help of as many crew members as possible, and follow the chief officer's orders. Foxhole, upper deck of a ship located at the bow. Bow chain stopper, a device for stopping a bow chain. Clamp, to hold down or hold steady, a device for holding something in place. Messenger rope, a rope used for hauling a cable equals messenger line a smaller rope to guide a larger rope or cable. Panama hole, a mooring hole for leading a rope or cable. Keep an eye on, to keep a close watch, to pay attention to. Rope stopper, a device for stopping and stabilizing a rope. Many have lost their lives, many people have been killed. Tug lines, a rope or cable used for hauling something or tugging a ship. Warping end, the twisted end of a rope or cable. Capstan, device used for lifting a heavy material, by winding a cable. 39 using the accommodation ladder. Second officer, Raymond, a service boat is coming. Lower the accommodation ladder on the starboard side. Raymond, it was lowered on the port side. Second officer, the port side is no good. There is a strong wind and the waves are high. You must use the starboard side. It is sheltered from the wind and the waves are not as big there. Raymond, yes, sir. I will lower it there. Second officer, there seems to be one of our crew members family on board. I'm going down with a safety vest. 
prepare an air light to brighten the place up. The bridge's wing lights might be bright enough. Raymond, yes, sir. You can use it as soon as you open the air valve. At the bottom of the accommodation ladder. Second officer, Raymond, okay, stop. The waves are high, so I'll lower it when the boat comes closer. Raymond, yes sir. The third mate is on the boat. Third officer, second officer, we're almost level. Can we transfer now? Second officer, are there guests on board? Third officer, yes, two women. Second officer, you help them onto the boat, and I'll help them from here. Tell them to take their time. Show them how to transfer when the boat is coming up and not when it is about to go down. And don't let them carry their luggage. I will give you a rope later so we can carry the bags up. Third officer, yes ma'am. Let's go. Accommodation ladder, a ladder used for boarding or leaving a ship. Sheltered from, protected from the effects of Safety vest, inflatable jacket or vest that will keep a person floating when cast into water Wing lights, lamps found on the ship's wings We're almost level, we are almost of the same height Transfer, to move over, to change over Luggage, suitcase or other cases carried by a traveler 40 safety on the stairway in the engine room Johnny good morning sir first engineer good morning Johnny the sea is a little rough today isn't it first engineer you are up bright and early this morning we're right in the middle of the monsoon the waves are very big be extra careful in the stairway Johnny yes I'll hold on firmly to the handrail and be very careful. First engineer, just a moment. That's dangerous. When you hold onto the handrail with your right hand forward, your left hand should be behind you, like this. It's easier for you to keep your balance that way and not slip. Johnny, I see. Like this? You're right? First engineer, it's also dangerous to carry tools when you climb stairs. You should put them in your pockets or in a tool bag tied around you. Johnny, I understand. My flashlight is in my left pocket, and my rag and wrench are in my right one. First engineer, also, take your time so you don't slip and fall. Be careful where you step, and always watch your head. Johnny, yes, sir. By the way, when I was in the store looking for some spare parts, I saw a big wooden box about 2 meters long, 50 centimeters wide and 1 meter high. What's it for, and what's inside of it? First engineer, it's an old valve that has to be landed at the next dry dock. We replaced it with a new one during our last voyage. Stairway, set of steps for moving up or down the different floor levels. Handrail, a railing to hold on to for better balance or support. Keep your balance, not to fall, maintain an upright posture. Flashlight, small portable lamp. Take your time, don't rush, don't hurry. Landed, stopped, positioned. Dry dock, a pool-like structure where water can be emptied to repair a ship. Replaced, changed with something else. 41 safety in the galley. Chief Steward. Good morning. Elon, good morning. It sure smells good here. Chief Steward, be careful. The ship is rocking. Don't drop your dishes. Elon, it must be tough to cook on a day like this. Now I know why you always wear safety shoes in the galley. Chief Steward, yes. Even in the galley we have to be careful. You could slip and drop a knife on your foot or a load of dishes on the floor, especially when the sea is as rough as it is now. Imagine what could happen if we were barefoot. Elon, especially with all of those hot dishes you serve. Chief Steward, exactly. And we can't see the waves like you can outside. Oh, 
the sea off Durban in South Africa is really terrible. But come monsoons or typhoons, everyone expects their meal to be ready. We can't let everyone down by not being safe. Elon, how do you stop the dishes from sliding off the shelves? Chief Steward, that is a problem. When we are in rough seas, sometimes the dishes even fly out of the deep sink, so we can't put the dishes anywhere when the sea is that rough. Elon, wow. It must be even worse on a small ship. Chief Steward, yes, then we wouldn't even be able to sit down and eat normally. Anyway, we all have to be careful when the ship pitches and rolls. Rocking, a ship moving from side to side. Barefoot, not wearing any footgear such as shoes. Typhoons, a tropical low pressure air mass with strong winds and heavy rain. Let everyone down, make everybody feel bad or sad sink, a basin for washing dirty dishes and utensils normally, usually, ordinarily. Pitches and rolls, vertical and sideways movements of a ship. Safety in the cabin. Elon, rushing into Johnny's cabin, what happened? I heard a loud noise. Johnny, that was close. I was standing on a chair trying to change a light bulb, and the chair moved and I fell down. These waves are really big. Elon, are you hurt? Johnny, I'm okay, but I fell hard on my arm. And the light bulb is smashed. Elon, I'll help you clean up. Johnny, thanks, but I'll take care of it. It was stupid of me to stand on a chair in such rough seas. Elon, that reminds me of the second officer. She went on her watch, and when she came back to her cabin, her bottle of wine had fallen on the floor and broke. She couldn't sleep because of the smell. Johnny, that's too bad. Actually, the sea wasn't so rough at midnight when the second officer started her watch, but it was terrible by morning. Elon, the second officer was worrying about her bottle of wine, but she couldn't return to her cabin while on duty. Johnny, she also said that she lost her favorite pen because of the ship rocking so much. Elon, how did that happen? Johnny, after writing to her family last night, she left the pen on her desk. It rolled off the desk and fell into the trash can. She threw away her garbage this morning not knowing the pen was inside. Elon, what a shame. That was close. I almost hurt myself. Oh, I barely managed to escape harm. Light bulb, electric light with a glowing filament inside. Hurt, to get injured. Smashed, broken into small bits. It was stupid of me, I was stupid to do such a thing. Went on her watch, started her shift of duty. On duty, working, not resting. Rolled off, moved off in a rolling motion. Trash can, a garbage can, a container for thrown out waste. Garbage, food waste, trash, worthless thing. What a shame, a great disappointment. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, please don't hesitate to press the like button. If you want to be updated when I post new videos, hit subscribe. I hope you enjoy.